Hey, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. On hand today, I have Intel's new Pentium G4560 processor. I've uh, got the little guy here. And this is a KB-like CPU featuring two cores, but interestingly, it has hyper-threading support, so there are four threads. And while well, that essentially makes it a Core i3 processor, which is a little confusing since we have Core i3 KB-8 processors. Anyway, it does come clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, so that means it's only 200 megahertz slower than the much-loved Core i3 6100, and that technically means it can't be more than 5% slower. That's amazing news for budget shoppers who had their eye on something like the i3-6100 because the G4560 cost just $72 US or $78 Aussie. That's almost half the price of the i3-6100 down under, a 48% discount for us Aussies. Anyway, at this point, it's pretty clear that the G4560 is going to be a great budget processor. And I do have a big benchmark video coming up next week to prove that. Today, I'm looking at something else. And while there will be a few benchmarks, that's not the main focus of this video. If you haven't heard, Intel's KB Lake processors do not support Windows 7 or 8.1, at least not officially. Uh, so because of this, it's caused a heap of confusion. And when I announced that I had a G45 on hand for testing, the most commonly asked question was, could I test it using Windows 7? Honestly, I didn't plan to do this. KB Lake is an x86 processor after all. So of course it's going to work with older and alternative operating systems. This is obviously another Microsoft scare tactic to try and get PC users to upgrade to Windows 10. What really surprised me was when I bought this chip at a local store. I won't name the retailer, but they are very large in Australia and have stores in most states. What surprised me was the salesman serving me stressed that I must use Windows 10 with this processor and that I would have a lot of trouble with Windows 8 or older operating systems. There was a long line behind me and I didn't really want to be that guy, so I didn't grill him as to why this was. I also knew that what he was saying technically wasn't incorrect. I was just surprised that he was passing on the Microsoft slash Intel message so passionately. So here are a few facts. Windows 7 will continue to receive updates until 2020. Windows 8 will receive updates until 2023. Currently, these versions of Windows are running perfectly fine on Skylake processors, and yet for some reason, Microsoft is discontinuing support for Skylake processors on July 17. 17th, 2017. Basically, this means beyond that point, Microsoft will not ensure that future updates are compatible with Skylake and now KB Lake processors, so stability and reliability could become an issue in the future, which is why Intel isn't announcing support for these older operating systems. The only possible KB Lake feature that I know of that might require operating support for maximum efficiency is Intel's new speed shift technology that makes it possible to change power states more quickly than Skylake. Still, I'm not sure budget users seeking the G4560, for example, will really care about this issue. Anyway, in an effort to address the commonly asked question, does the Pentium G4560 work with Windows 7? Well, let's take a look. First up, I ran the Cinebench R15 multi-threaded CPU benchmark to establish a baseline. Under Windows 10, the G4560 scores 377 points, and this score was confirmed by three separate runs. Meanwhile, using the older Windows 7 operating system, the best score we saw was 354 points, and that's a 6% performance hit. This isn't necessarily down to the lack of official KB Lake support, but rather the fact that Windows 7 is now an eight-year-old operating system. Moving to another synthetic benchmark, I ran 3D Mark Firestrike, and here the G4560 in conjunction with the GeForce GTX 1060 scored 9,102 points, which was less than 2% slower than the 9,244 point score that we saw under Windows 10. After that, it was time for some games. Deus Ex Mankind Divided was testing using DirectX 11, since Windows 7 doesn't support DirectX 12. The performance was identical on both operating systems, and I found after looking at a number of games that the performance only varied by 1 to 2 frames a second, which is margin of error stuff. Finally, I also quickly looked at power consumption, and using the exact same test system, we found that Windows 7 and Windows 10 provided the exact same power draw. Again, there were just a few watts in it, so safe to say it was within the margin of error. Throughout my testing, I didn't run into any issues with Windows 7 at all. Uh, stability was excellent. That said, it has been a long time since I've revisited this old operating system, and I'm personally happy to leave it in the past. <laughs> Just setting up the system was a huge pain. Obviously, most won't be installing the uh, Windows 7 operating system on a 200 series motherboard, so the issues I ran into should be fairly isolated. 
For example, upon installing Windows 7, I could only use the PS2 port on my Z270 board, which wasn't particularly useful since I had no network connection and none of the USB ports worked. The quickest solution for me was to throw the drive in an older system that featured USB 2.0 ports and copy the drivers over that way. For whatever reason, the USB 2.0 header on my Z270 board didn't work until the system drivers were installed. Anyway, I personally don't have an issue with Windows 10 and I'm more than happy to have it. Still, that's not the point here. If you have a strict budget or simply don't want to buy a new software just yet, it appears you don't have to. The G4560 works perfectly fine with Windows 7. Performance was down in a few areas, but that was to be expected. After all, Windows 7 was replaced by Windows 8 four years ago now. So for all of you guys asking me if the Pentium G4560 can run Windows 7, you should have your answer now. Uh, with that, I will get back to benchmarking the G4560 properly um, against some modern Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 processors in a bunch of different games with a few different graphics cards and resolutions, and I should have those results ready for you guys pretty soon. Uh, anyway, that's all for this one. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you on the next one.